there's a legitimate chance Anthony Volpe can make this team. Like, I, I've told you before that you've got a situation, he's not on the 40-man roster, there have to be some roster maneuvering. He has impressed so many important people. I'm not saying it'll happen. There's a chance he can make the team. Wow. But not on the bench. If he makes the team, he's going to play. Hmm. Can play every day. It's an interesting team. I think it's going to be a really, really good team. Uh, but the, you cannot just dismiss the injuries to Carlos Rodon. Um, that's big. And that, that goes on top of Frankie Montas. So Carlos Rodon is the number two pitcher on the team. He's supposed to start after Garrett Cole. Now, you know, they say he, he, he'll be, he'll, all things being good, he'll come back sometime in April. But this guy's had shoulder surgery and elbow surgery. Yeah. So when you hear any kind of anything about his arm, you get a little nervous. Because that was the only question mark about this guy. He's so good. It's a no-brainer to sign him, but is he going to stay healthy? And now he's not even going to be on the opening day roster. That's big. So when you drew up this team at the beginning of the year, it was Cole. It was Rodon. It was Severino. It was Montas. And it was at Cortez, although Cortez was fourth and Montas was five. Montas out probably the whole year. Rodon will not start the team, start with the team. So now your fourth and fifth starters are um, Domingo Herman, who's looked very, very good, and um, Clark Schmidt, who's also looked really good. But now when you use your depth, you know what that means? You don't have depth. There's nobody to use after that. And people will get hurt again. People get hurt. People get hurt. David Cohn has always told me, you don't need a five-man staff. You need an eight-man staff. So even if you had an eight-man staff, you've already dipped into two of them. The Yankees, because they went for it all last year with the trade for Afros, who's out for the year, the trade for Montas and, and Trevino, um, they and the, the trade for Ben Benintendi, they traded all their second-tier depth and starting pitchers, like Waldachuk and J.P. Sears. And it made sense for them to go for it. But now, they might have guys that could step up and do a good job. We have no idea. They might know. But they're certainly not the high-level prospects that they traded away to get the players that they had. So that's a question mark. And now you have to hope that Rodon, it's not serious, that it's just a muscle that will get better. And after shutting him down for 10 days, he'll come back and probably come back third week of April. We'll see. Losing Trevino is big. Lou Trevino is a big part of the bullpen. Losing Tommy Canely, big. Now, Tommy Canely is supposed to be back sometime toward the end of April. Let's hope that's the truth. Trevino, not sure. Those are big losses. Big losses. And then after the game yesterday, after we got off the air, it was revealed that Harrison Bader felt, a, felt something on his side, his, his oblique. That scares me. Obliques take a long time. So to what severity does he have? I don't know. But there's something in there. And what's the depth? Who's going to be playing the outfield now? You have to put Judge in center again? You have to put Stanton in right every game? Who's your left fielder? So all of these things have like a domino effect. And the worst thing that can happen in spring training is people get hurt. Now, you could say, well, it's better to get hurt in spring training than in July. Get it. Got it. But you don't want to start the season slow either. The thing that saved the Yankees last year is they started the season great. Yep. Yep. It allowed them to fall off and not really fall off. Now, on the good news front, Dominguez has looked phenomenal. You got to call the Dominguez home run? I did. The Martian has landed. Yeah. And then David dropped in my – he's my favorite Martian. Now, do you know what that means? Nope. Really? The Martian has landed? No, no. He said, that's my favorite Martian. It's my favorite Martian. It was a very popular TV show in the 60s. This guy, Ray Walston, who was a movie star, who got older, played a Martian. And Bill Bixby, you know that name? Yes. Before a courtship of his father, was the guy who knew he was a Martian. So he called him My Favorite Martian. And that's the name of the show, is My yeah. Favorite Martian? Go, go dive into YouTube. Why, why is Dominguez a Martian? Because he's got otherworldly talent. Also, his name is Jason Dominguez. 
and he was named after Jason Giambi. I know that, I know, yeah. And his father added another S, but his father loved the player Jason Giambi, named him Jason Dominguez, having a great spring. He will not stick with the team. He's 20 years old, hasn't played a triple A. But one of the guys that's impressed everybody is Anthony Volpe. And I didn't think he had a chance to make the team at the beginning of spring training because he's not on the 40. So if he gets put on the 40 to be called up to the 26, you're going to lose somebody. You're going to expose somebody to be picked up. So far this spring, 20 at bats hitting 300. Looked very good in the field. Has, has a way about him. He did something yesterday I thought was so beautiful. Lou Pinello was there. Uh, Lou Pinello is 79 years old. And... Yeah, he's a Yankee icon. And somebody brought Anthony Volpe over, who was taking batting practice, to meet Lou Pinella. Now, Anthony Volpe probably knows who Lou Pinella is because his father and grandfather are gigantic Yankee fans, and so is Anthony, growing up in Jersey. And because he's a, he raised the right way, went over to the man, took his hat off, and shook his hand. Other people coming up with their helmet. Not that there's anything wrong with keeping your hat or your helmet on, but he's out of respect to the guy, he took off his hat and then shook his hand. Wow. That's a well-raised 22-year-old kid. Yeah. So he's everything the Yankees want in him. And there is a chance. I wouldn't say I would say I wouldn't say I would bet this way, but he could he could earn his way on this team. He was in triple last year? Just for 99 at bats. Okay. Otherwise, it was lower levels of the minors. And he didn't really hit that well in AAA. So when you go up in level, it, it's a challenge. So yeah. we shall see. But that, it's exciting. To, you know, it, it could be Peraza or Volpe or Peraza and Volpe. Because what happens if they need to trade for pitching now? Is Glaber Torres somebody that would interest people? Then all of a sudden, you open up second base where Volpe was playing yesterday. And there you have a, a young keystone combo. See what I mean? I see what you mean. Glad would you're you, here. Would you be sad to see Glaber go? I like Glaber, but, I mean, he's got one more year before he becomes a free agent. Are you willing to pay Glaber $25 million a year? So you have to make that decision. Right.